Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to Andy's of the Sci-Fi Horror Show. My name's Andy. And I'm Drew. And we're talking about nothing in particular. We're basically driving to the mall because I'm going to show Drew that there's a new Halloween store opening up, a uh, seasonal store. I'm going to see if they have any dates posted when they're actually opening instead of just like opening in September because it's September right now and then ain't nothing happening in there. This is what happens when we don't actually have a subject matter of a TV show. We kind of just, it kind of just jumps around into it's like griping, like an old married couple. This oh. is called the Andy's Little Sci-Fi Horror Show Half in the Bag Edition. Unplugged, I was going with like, or unsubject. No subject, no nothing. No subject matter required. Yeah, but going to the movies isn't like going to the movies used to be. No, it isn't. No, you know, this 3D is totally killing the movie going experience. And thank God that fat is dying down, which I told you guys it was going to die down again. True story. I was going to see Cowboys and Aliens, a movie that I actually saw and loved, okay? And I tried That's to it, yeah. see it for three weeks. And every single time I would go in the movie theater, there would be like um, one movie that would take up like three screens each, two of them being 3D and one of them being like regular 2D. And it's like they choke up the 15 screen movie theaters with these these like big budgeted things. Like I don't want to see the Smurfs. I want to see Cowboys and Aliens. Oh, I'll see this. I'll rent the Smurfs. I'm not yeah, gonna rent, rent the Smurfs. I'm not, gonna, home. I'm not gonna go see the Smurfs on a big screen. You know that's the problem with 3D now. Is like it's just it looks bad. And it well, how about the fact microphone. that how about the fact that it costs like seventeen dollars to take <sighs> you you and your wife to the movies? I mean, that's the matinee price. Yeah. I, the non-3D matinee price, you know, yeah. Yeah. of the classic film they just dug out of the vault. Oh. I'm waiting for Jem to come out. Remember Jem? Jem. Well, you, you, you won't let me forget it. So I mean, see. truly, truly outrageous. I, I, I do remember that now. You said that. See, <laughs> I'm not like I'm not all over the gem, really. You know? I, I was. I don't know. She like she has to like do something with the earring, and then she changes. No, the story about gem is okay. Oh, gee, it was a, It was a toy from Hasbro. Hasbro wanted to compete with Barbie from Mattel, and so it was around the time when GI Joe was big and Transformers were big. <laughs> My and Little so, Pony. Yeah, My Little Pony was big. So they needed to come up with a doll, and they came up with this thing called Gem, which is about a girl. Who is a super duper rock star, or whatever? And she's Isn't she like a supermodel designer? Talk about having a low profile alter ego. It was kind of like one of those. Um, she's she's got a band called Gem and the Holograms, and they fight these the, the another band called the, the Misfits. <laughs> and, uh, not so, the Misfits, but the Misfits. Yeah, not the Misfits like you would know the punk group. No, we're talking about the Misfits, another female band. And so their songs are better. I know this because. Um, nowadays, people can see stuff on the hub and they show stuff on Boomerang that shows all the old gem cartoons. And so I saw it and I just DVR'd it for my daughter to watch. And it's just kind of funny because it was a whole huge toy line back in the 1980s. Well, that's how they did it. That's what yeah. G.I. Joe was too. It was like it was like right. a 30 minute advertisement. The new, the new uh, toys were like the new weapons and vehicles in the, in the show. Exactly. New characters are tanned. Yeah, Omax and Zaymon. Yeah, every every single and, season, you know, they'd have like some new toys. Yeah. But Gem was like one of those toys that kind of came, and the TV show kept it going for a while. But then it just went. You know, I mean, my 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 wife will tell you that she had a Gem lunchbox and all the Gem toys, but uh, you know, she never saved any of them. I'm sure you can go on eBay and buy them. But I'm serious. I'm expecting that to be the next thing that they're going to drag out of the 80s and turn into a big budget motion picture. Well, I mean, it certainly could be done. Well, if Michael Bay directs it, there'll be lots of explosions. I just love it. And I love the, like, the, uh, the hidden Hasbro messages. Like, even in the original Transformers, when a Transformer lands in the pool in the backyard and the little girl hears it and she goes outside and she the, the Transformer comes out of the freaking pool. I'm a dork for noticing this, but I'm like... I saw even in this theater, she's uh, she this huge creature coming out of the pool, it's dripping wet, and it steps right over. I'm thinking, she's holding a My Little Pony. <laughs> How hilarious is that? My Little Pony, the movie directed I, by Jerry Bruckheimer. Are you kidding? Directed by me, I would direct that in a heartbeat. You'd put like explosions and you know the the the, the whole the, thing was 
those, epi- those cartoons are terrifying. Yeah, the president has been kidnapped by ninjas, and the only people that can save the president is my, my little pony. I can see it. I can see it. <laughs> Co-directed by John Woo. <laughs> Snorts Flippin versus Flippin Smurfs. Oh, that dude. He's hilarious. <laughs> Two icons enter. One walks away. One swims away. We're not telling who wins. <laughs> well, the snorts can swim. I know, that's... That's that's redundant. When you, you know, everything redundant. in the 1980s was turned into a toy for, for us as kids. And everything in the 80s is being, every toy is being turned into like, a movie for now. Like Rambo. Rambo was turned into a toy in a cartoon show for kids. Mm-hmm. Rambo! Oh, I mean... Toxic Avenger was turned into a Saturday morning cartoon. Everything turned into a Saturday morning cartoon. Yeah. Even uh, Attack of the Killer Tomatoes. Oh yeah, that was a good show. Uh, I mean, I mean, New Kids on the Block had a Saturday morning cartoon. Oh, sh- don't remind me. And some movies franchises didn't even wait until the nineties and two thousand to become a movie. He Man, for example, oh. that, they made that into a movie right away as soon as they had the rights to it. Maybe they, they should have waited. I'm gonna be honest with you. When that movie came out, it was kind of like at the end of the whole E-Man craze. The whole E-Man craze, it was huge. Yeah. It was amazing. Like you know, those those toys are kind of sought after, right? And and now, it, it, well, now it's they're sought after. But the thing about it is, is that He-Man back in the 1980s, it was when the movie came out, it was just at that burnout point, you know? Yes. It's at but that no, but, point. but sometimes that can save a franchise. Look at the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Yes. When that movie came out, it brought back a whole whole different audience for the Ninja Turtles. I mean, granted, the movie was designed for kids, but really, it was really designed for the uh, the, the teen. And then now, you know it worked because still today you can go to Hot Topics or some place in the mall and you can get uh, the Teenage Mutant Ninja Tito, uh, the T with the graphic of the shell in the front. You can still oh, see yeah. that nowadays because they did revamp it in 2007. So, you know, some of them just survive. Some franchises just survive. Yeah, some things are just meant for that time period. You know, and it's just the way you just I don't know. it. I don't know. People say the same thing about Wonder Woman and Captain America being only for the 40s and 50s. No, I think that... they, uh, they But they had staying power. They had staying power. But the other thing is, it's like how you deliver it. How do you True. bring it into the... Like, I saw Captain America the movie, and I was really impressed with it. I actually liked the, the movie. I didn't see it yet. I know, oh, but I was just using that as an example. I mean, yeah. like, I mean, if you if you went back in time and you know and saw and first run Captain America on the shelves, you know, and you pay, you put your uh, you know twenty five cents down on the counter, you wouldn't think that you would still be talking about that character sixty plus years, seventy plus years later on. Here, but here we are. Yes, we are. I think there's uh, there's room for a couple of more toys from our childhood to become major motion pictures. Rainbow Bright. <laughs> Rainbow Bright. Strawberry Shortcake. Seems my daughter watches her. She's like my daughter's version of your daughter's version of Jim. They've already done the Care Bears. She's totally stuck. You know, Scooby-Doo, my daughter's totally stuck on Scooby-Doo right now. They've already, yeah, Scooby-Doo is another one. Like there's a ghost right behind me, isn't there? <laughs> Well, Care Bears, and the interesting thing about Care Bears and Strawberry Shortcakes is they actually are making movies of them. They are they are directed video movies and they're CGI and uh, the Care Bears, they're not bad actually. I mean, I mean Barbie, what they are. Yeah. You know, Barbie never had a movie. No, Barbie has plenty of like, Oh, yeah, the, the CGI. Yeah, yeah, that's right. That's right. I, I stand corrected. I was thinking live action because who the hell would play Barbie? Roseanne Barr? Oh, no. No, they would get someone stupid like. Sandra Bullock can say, she's brunette now because it's PC. Oh, f- I'm not a big fan, as you can tell. <laughs> well, this is going to conclude our episode of uh, Going to the Mall because yeah. um, we're almost at the mall. Yeah. <laughs> My name's Andy. And I'm Drew. Good night. Yeah.